is 919. It's a topic a lot of parents struggle with. What is the appropriate age to start talking about race and social justice issues? Dr. Tracy Baxley is a professor of education who has spent the past 30 years teaching diversity and inclusion. She's also the mother of five biracial children. In her new book, Social Justice Parenting, How to Raise Compassionate, Anti-Racist, Justice-Minded Kids in an Unjust World, she gives parents guidance on how to have some of those tough discussions. Good morning. Thanks for being Good with morning. us. Good morning. Thanks for having me. I think this is, you know, it's it's whenever all of these things are happening in the world, I think parents struggle to walk this line of protecting your child's innocence and also opening their eyes to what's happening in the world. So is there a fine line of when that or a, fi a perfect age for when that conversation should happen? Yeah, there's no perfect age. I think uh, children are never too young, though. I think the more conversations we're having in our homes, the better we can guide them in making some of the decisions and instilling some of the values that we have in our homes to them. I think it's just about making things age appropriate. Yeah, so there are obvious and severe signs of racism through history. What are some of the subtle ones that perhaps n not only kids don't recognize, but adults as well? I think some of the what, what we call the microaggressions happen, you know, things that we say to people that we don't think because through our own lived experiences, it, it does, it's not a big deal. But when you look at the lived experiences of different groups of people, the things that we say and the way that we um, interact with them may have some some negative connotations or some ways that offend people that we're just not aware of. I think it's important that we spend time around other people. You also say that as a family, you've you've made it a habit of just um, making compassionate habits a thing that you do with your children. You lead by example, like paying for someone behind you in the drive-through. Uh, just give some examples to people of how you do those kind of things. Yeah, I think some points that are, that we model, right? We want to model what our kids, uh, what we want our kids to do, and who we want them to be, be. And the best way to do that is having these compassionate and kindness acts in action. So little things like paying paying for people behind us in line. We also do things like dropping things off in, um, you know, shelters or places where things are needed. Also, um, I tell my kids how important just smiling at people, how that changes people's day. So it doesn't have to be something expensive or something major. It can be a little thing as asking somebody how their day was and acknowledging that you see them. I would imagine the arts are an effective way to teach kids, whether they're seeing a movie like Hidden Figures or perhaps watching events on the news. How can you use those things to teach your children about this? I think the, the major way that we can really start to open up um, with our kids is really having open and honest dialogue. I think people are so afraid of saying the wrong things or not knowing enough that we tend to not say anything at all. And I think being vulnerable as a parent and really talking about the fact that you may not have all the answers is really a great place to start and starting to learn things and grow together is really important. You say activism is important for, for kids to do as well, but in a kid-friendly way. So what are, what are some examples of that when your kids are young? Yeah, I think it's really... We, to do things like letter writing, talk to your children about how they feel. I think open-ended questions with kids, like, what do you know about this? Tell me more. What do you think about that? How can our family help? help? And a lot of children have a lot of ideas that we don't allow them to kind of lean into their natural curiosities with. And I think really tapping into your community to see what's needed in your community. Well, Dr. Tracy Bexley, thanks so much for being with us. We appreciate you joining us. Thank you for having me. And her book is Social Justice Parenting.